Hi guys and welcome back to Think Student. Today we're going to be looking at how hard is A-level further maths. A-level further maths is considered by many to be one of the most difficult A-levels out there, so you'll need a passion for mathematics and a great work ethic in order to succeed in this subject. We recommend that in order to take A-level further maths, you would have achieved at least a grade 7 or an A in your GCSE maths exam, but a qualification in GCSE further maths is not necessary. Our first point is how does the content compare? It's a given that A-level further maths is a step up from its standard maths counterpart, but the amount of content and the pacing is exactly the same. Further maths differs slightly, however, as it's split into four sections instead of three, consisting of pure mathematics, statistics, mechanics, and decision, but we'll cover more about that later on. A-level further maths is a topic that tends to stand out when universities are looking through applications, as they often regard students with this qualification to be very academically gifted and therefore more suitable for hard to get into courses like the STEM subjects. But in order to even partake in A-level further maths, you'll need a couple things. First off, it's necessary that you take A-level maths as well, as many of the concepts covered in further maths are first described in A-level maths. It's also necessary to have the right calculator. Cassia themselves recommend their CG50 graphing calculator for this, as maths in general can be a very visual subject. But if you'd like to learn more about the calculator, or where to purchase it, you can check out both the links in the description down below. Secondly, we'll look at how much more difficult is the content. For A-level further maths, the content does not seem to particularly vary between exam boards, covering the same concepts. However, they do affect what your exams will be like. As mentioned earlier, we know that further maths is divided into pure statistics, mechanics and decision, and these modules are split into 15 different topics. Pure covers some basic principles and theories, but lacks most real-world applications. Statistics contains lots and lots of graphs, hence why a graphing calculator is recommended. It's all about interpreting data, looking at distributions, and many algorithms. This area of maths is great if you have aspirations of being an analyst. Mechanics makes up for the highest proportion of the course, looking at problems related to physics, which directly contrasts with the decision part of the course, which takes up the least amount. You may know that A-level maths for the Edexcel exam board has 19 different topics, which is more than the amount in A-level further maths. But don't let this deceive you, as the further maths topics have more content, meaning they take longer to teach and learn. During your A-level further maths lessons, you may often find yourself sitting there and wondering what on earth is going on, but do not stress as this happens more often than you think. But in order to resolve this issue, it's vital that when you go home, you learn the content for yourself, as failing to do so will almost certainly leave you in a tight spot. Given how often this tends to happen, we classify A-level further maths as an extremely independent subject relative to other A-levels. We recommend that the amount of time you spend in class for A-level further maths should be equal to the amount of time that you spend studying independently. This should be about four and a half hours. Thirdly, we have how do the final exams compare? A-level further maths differs from many other subjects as the content you cover in your final exams is ultimately down to you. Everyone will take four papers and in the Edexcel specification, it's compulsory for students to take two papers covering pure mathematics, but the other two papers are down to you, where you can pick from all the other aspects of the course. It's without saying that the exam questions are extremely difficult, therefore unless you do proper revision, you may find yourself with a U. The exam questions themselves tend to be very long compared to the GCSE and some A-level maths questions, due to the depth of the content you need to know, meaning more content is covered in each question. Coming up next, we'll cover what textbooks do you need? There are two types of A-level textbooks that really come in handy, enabling you to get top grades. These two types are called revision guides and classroom textbooks. Revision guides are for, you guessed it, revision. They don't explain aspects in detail, but are mainly used to reinforce the knowledge you already know. Textbooks, on the other hand, completely contrast revision guides as they explain concepts in depth. Textbooks are perfect if you ever don't quite grasp a topic in class, and especially useful when it comes to the year two part of your course, as many parts are hard to understand the first time around. But it's also very important that you get the correct textbooks and revision guides for the exam board you're doing, as the content can vary in areas. We've got some great books that we recommend you get, all of which will be linked in the description below. A quick disclaimer though, if you're on a budget, the classroom textbooks are not absolutely essential, they're just very useful. So if you have to pick between the two types of books, we'd recommend you get the revision guides as they're the most helpful by far. Next up, we have what A-levels go well with A-level further maths. We already know that pairing A-level further maths and maths together is a solid choice, but what other options do you have? Your third option tends to simply depend on what you want to do after college. 
if you're looking to be a data analyst, then taking A-level further maths with A-level economics is a good idea. Taking business studies as a third choice would open up a huge range of opportunities for you as well, giving you a head start into the working world. Or you could even pair further maths with computer science, as many of the prestigious universities have computer science courses with a heavy emphasis on mathematics. So much so that they'll often prefer that you have A-level further maths over computer science. We actually have a whole article and a video dedicated to great A-level combinations, which will both be linked in the description below if you'd like to check them out. And finally, we have where can further maths take you after college? A long story short is pretty much anything you want. This is because A-level further maths is a great pathway into loads of different career paths. The most likely and obvious road to go down if you're an A-level further maths student is university. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, A-level further maths is highly desired by all universities, even the most prestigious ones like Oxford and Cambridge. I would assume that if you're taking further maths A-level, you're looking for a future somewhat related to maths, Therefore, if you choose to study any course maths related at university, a qualification in further maths is sure to distinguish you between many other applicants. That's it for this video guys. If you'd like to see the article this video was based off of, or any of the other websites mentioned in the video, you can check them all out in the description down below.